Chapter 1. Understanding the Science of Decision-Making When Sarah walked into the office, she felt unprepared for the meeting that was about to take place. Her boss had asked her to make a decision regarding a promotion for one of her colleagues, and she was feeling overwhelmed by the task. She wondered how she could make a choice that would be fair and successful for both the company and her co-worker. As Sarah sat down and began to gather information, she realized that she was going through a cognitive process that involved evaluating different options and weighing their pros and cons. She knew that emotions played a significant role in decision-making, and she tried to stay mindful of her feelings so that they wouldn't cloud her judgment. She was aware of the biases that she might have about the person being considered for the promotion and tried to approach the situation objectively. Sarah was also mindful of the heuristics that she used to make decisions in her personal and professional life. She knew that sometimes she relied on mental shortcuts that could prevent her from making the best choice. She tried to avoid falling into those traps and made sure that all the options were being considered fairly. In the end, Sarah made a choice that she felt good about. It was in the best interest of the company and also gave her colleague the chance to advance in their career. She knew that her decision was not perfect, but she was proud of the effort she put into making a thoughtful and informed choice. Sarah's experience illustrates the complex nature of decision-making and the various factors that can impact the choices we make. We rely on our cognitive processes to identify and evaluate options, but emotions, biases, and heuristics often come into play and can affect our final decision. As individuals, we need to be aware of these factors and try to make choices that are well-informed and objective. Understanding the science behind decision-making is essential for anyone who needs to make choices in their personal or professional lives. By knowing how our minds work and recognizing the different variables that can impact our decisions, we can become more skillful at making choices that align with our goals and values. In the end, every decision we make is a personal reflection of our character and values. Our choices determine the course of our lives, and we have the power to shape our destiny through thoughtful and informed decision-making. Question. What is the science behind decision-making? Check the video description for the answer. Chapter 2. Types of Decision-Making As Adam sat at his desk, staring at the stack of emails in his inbox, he knew that he needed to make a decision. The company's sales were down, and he was feeling the pressure to turn things around. He realized that he needed to take a proactive approach to address the issue before it became a serious problem. Adam began to research different strategic and tactical decision-making types. He knew that he needed to make a plan that would address the root cause of the problem, rather than simply reacting to the symptoms. He spent hours analyzing data, talking to his team, and considering different options. Finally, he came up with a plan. He decided that the company needed to launch a new marketing campaign to raise awareness of their products. He also knew that he needed to motivate his team to work together to achieve their goals. Adam put his plan into motion, and he was pleased to see that it was working. The marketing campaign was a success, and sales began to increase. His team was also working together more effectively, and morale improved. Adam's experience demonstrates the importance of proactive decision-making. By taking a strategic approach, he was able to tackle the problem before it became a crisis. He also used tactical decision-making to implement a plan that would address the root cause of the issue, rather than simply reacting to the symptoms. There are different types of decision-making that individuals can use depending on their goals and circumstances. Reactive decision-making involves responding to a problem after it has already occurred. This type of decision-making is often used in emergency situations when immediate action is required. Proactive decision-making, 
on the other hand, involves anticipating problems and taking steps to prevent them from occurring. This type of decision-making is beneficial in situations where a problem can be identified before it becomes a crisis. Strategic decision-making involves considering long-term goals and making decisions that will help achieve them. This type of decision-making is useful in situations where a bigger picture perspective is needed. Tactical decision-making, on the other hand, involves making decisions that will help achieve shorter-term goals. This type of decision-making is beneficial in situations where immediate action is required to achieve a specific objective. Adam's ability to use a combination of proactive, strategic, and tactical decision-making types allowed him to achieve success in addressing the company's problems. He was able to anticipate and address potential issues, while also setting a long-term vision for the company's success. At the same time, he implemented immediate solutions that improved sales and team morale. Understanding the different types of decision-making and when to use them is critical for anyone who wants to achieve success in their personal or professional life. By taking a proactive approach, setting long-term goals, and making tactical decisions, individuals can achieve their objectives and prepare for unexpected challenges. Question. What are the different types of decision-making? Check the video description for the answer. Chapter 3. The Decision-Making Process As Jane sat at her desk, she couldn't help but feel overwhelmed by the problems staring back at her. Her team was struggling with a high turnover rate, and she knew that she needed to make some decisions quickly to address the issue. She decided to follow the decision-making process to ensure that she made the best choice possible. The first stage of the process was to identify the problem. Jane knew that the high turnover rate was a major issue, as it was costing the company money and creating a stressful environment for the existing employees. She gathered as much information as she could to better understand the problem and its impact on the company. With a clear understanding of the problem, Jane moved on to the second stage of the process, which was to identify potential options. She brainstormed with her team and came up with several ideas, including offering more competitive salaries and benefits, increasing employee engagement, and offering better training and development opportunities. With a list of potential options in hand, Jane moved on to the third stage of the process which was to evaluate each option. She considered the costs and benefits of each option, as well as any potential risks associated with each one. After careful consideration, she decided that offering better training and development opportunities was the best option for her team. Finally, it was time for Jane to take action. She communicated her decision to her team and began implementing the necessary changes. She brought in a consultant to evaluate the training and development programs currently in place and identified areas for improvement. She then worked with her team to develop a comprehensive training and development plan that would address the needs of each employee. As a result of Jane's decision-making process, her team's turnover rate began to decrease. Existing employees were happier and more engaged and new hires were more likely to stay with the company in the long term. The company was also able to save money on recruitment and training costs, which helped improve the bottom line. Jane's experience highlights the importance of following a structured decision-making process. By taking the time to identify the problem, gather information, identify potential options, evaluate those options, and take action, she was able to make a strategic decision that had a profound impact on her team and the company as a whole. The decision-making process is particularly useful in complex situations where multiple factors need to be considered. It encourages individuals to take a systematic approach rather than relying on intuition or emotions. By breaking down the decision-making process into stages, Individuals can ensure that they are considering all relevant factors and making well-informed decisions. In the end, Jane's decision, 
making process helped her to achieve her goal of addressing the high turnover rate on her team. She was able to make a strategic decision based on information and a thorough evaluation of potential options. As a result, she was able to take effective action that had a positive impact on her team and the company as a whole. Question, what are the stages of the decision-making process? Check the video description for the answer. Chapter 4, Factors Affecting Decision-Making As Sarah walked into her boss's office, her heart was racing with nerves. She wanted to ask for a raise but was worried about how her boss would react. She knew that her emotions were affecting her decision-making process. She took a deep breath and reminded herself that she needed to stay calm and rational. Sarah's boss listened to her request, but ultimately turned her down. As Sarah walked out of the office, she couldn't help but feel disappointed. However, she knew that she couldn't let her emotions cloud her judgment. She reminded herself that there were external pressures affecting her boss's decision, such as budget constraints and company policies. Later that day, Sarah attended a seminar on decision-making. The speaker discussed the role of biases, heuristics, and values in the decision-making process. Sarah realized that her own biases and values had played a role in her desire for a race. She had been comparing herself to her colleagues and feeling undervalued. However, she reminded herself that her salary was fair and that her worth shouldn't be based solely on her salary. Over the next few weeks, Sarah became more aware of her biases and values and made a conscious effort to see situations from different perspectives. She also learned how to use heuristics to make decisions more efficiently. She realized that heuristics could be useful in situations where time was limited or the decision wasn't critical. However, she also recognized that heuristics could be dangerous if she relied on them too heavily. Sarah's newfound understanding of decision-making was put to the test when her company proposed a merger with a larger corporation. Sarah was tasked with evaluating the pros and cons of the merger. She felt overwhelmed and unsure where to start. However, she reminded herself to take a systematic approach and gather as much information as possible. As Sarah researched the merger, she became aware of her own biases and values. She realized that she was more focused on the potential risks than the potential benefits, which was affecting her judgment. She made a conscious effort to consider both the pros and cons equally. Sarah also encountered external pressures in the decision-making process, as the CEO of the larger corporation was pressuring her company to agree to the merger. She had to remind herself that outside pressures shouldn't influence the decision and that she needed to make the best decision for her company. In the end, Sarah recommended that her company reject the merger proposal. She presented a thorough analysis of the risks and benefits and carefully considered all factors including her emotions, biases, heuristics, external pressures, and values. Her decision was respected by her colleagues and ultimately proved to be the best decision for her company. Sarah's experience demonstrated the importance of understanding the factors that can affect decision-making. By becoming aware of her biases, emotions, and values, she was able to make more rational and effective decisions. She also learned how to use heuristics efficiently and how to evaluate external pressures. Sarah's newfound skills helped her make critical decisions for her company and improved her overall decision-making ability. Question, what are some factors that can affect decision-making? Check the video description for the answer. Chapter 5, Rational Decision-Making Sophie had always struggled with decision-making. She was often guided by her emotions and found it difficult to separate her personal feelings from objective criteria. However, when a career opportunity came up that she simply couldn't pass by, it was time for Sophie to shift her approach. She needed to learn how 
to make decisions in a more rational and objective manner. Sophie started by listing out her options. She wrote down the pros and cons of each opportunity, including the potential risks and rewards. She tried to stay objective throughout this process, avoiding any emotional biases. Next, Sophie began to analyze each option. She evaluated how each opportunity aligned with her personal goals and long-term aspirations. She considered the impact on her personal life, her professional ambitions, and her financial stability. This allowed her to narrow down the list of options and focus on those that had the highest potential for success. Finally, Sophie established criteria for her decision-making process. These criteria were based on her personal values and the needs of her family. She created a checklist of factors that each option needed to meet, such as salary, location, and work-life balance. As Sophie continued to evaluate her options, she became more confident in her ability to make a rational decision. She was no longer swayed by her emotions or personal biases. Instead, she relied on objective criteria to guide her decision-making process. When Sophie had finally made her decision, she felt at peace. She knew that she had made the best choice for herself and her family. Even though she knew that there would be challenges ahead, she felt secure in her decision. She knew that she had made a well-informed and rational choice. In the end, Sophie learned that rational decision-making is a matter of discipline and practice. It requires a patient and systematic approach that is based on objective analysis and evaluation of options. She encourages others to follow her lead and adopt a rational approach to decision-making. By doing so, they can achieve their goals and live a fulfilling life. Question. What is rational decision-making? Check the video description for the answer. Chapter 6. Intuitive Decision-Making Sophie had always been a thinker. She would analyze and evaluate every option before making a decision. However, over the years, Sophie discovered that sometimes the best decisions come from within from your gut feelings and instincts. Sophie had just started a new job, and despite the positive feedback from her colleagues, Sophie found that something was off. She couldn't put her finger on it but her gut feelings told her that this wasn't the right fit for her. Even though this job provided her with a stable salary and excellent benefits, Sophie couldn't shake the feeling that she didn't belong there. One day, Sophie decided to take a walk during her lunch break. As she was walking, she came across a small boutique that caught her eye. Sophie had always loved fashion and design, and something about the boutique intrigued her. She went inside and started to browse the racks. As she was examining a gorgeous silk blouse, the owner of the boutique approached her. Can I help you find something specific? The owner asked. Sophie hesitated before responding. There wasn't anything specific she needed, yet she was drawn to the store. She explained this to the owner, and they started chatting. Sophie found that she had a lot in common with the owner and even some similar life experiences. They talked for a while before Sophie realized that it was time to go back to work. As Sophie walked back to her job, she still couldn't shake the feeling of warmth that she had experienced while talking to the boutique owner. It was then that Sophie realized that her gut feelings had started her on a new process of decision-making. She began to realize that sometimes the answers are not always in our logic, and other times they might not be in a perfect formula. However, sometimes it takes courage, trust, and that we listen to ourselves in a different way. Sophie knew that she needed to leave her current job. And even though the idea of leaving a stable income and job security made her feel uneasy, she knew that her instincts were right. She needed to pursue something that made her feel passionate and fulfilled. Sophie took a leap of faith and quit her job. She reached out to the boutique owner she had met 
and expressed her interest in working in the fashion industry. To Sophie's surprise, the owner offered Sophie a job at the boutique, explaining that she needed someone with Sophie's organizational skills and passion for fashion. Sophie started working at the boutique and immediately felt an incredible sense of fulfillment. She felt happy and whole, knowing that she was doing something that aligned with her values and dreams. The job at the boutique allowed her to pursue something that she was passionate about and gave her a sense of purpose that her previous job never had. Sophie's instinctive decision proved to be the right one, and she helped to create an innovative process in making decisions. Sophie realized that sometimes the answers we need are within ourselves, and we just need to trust our instincts. And while the process might not always be comfortable or easy, sometimes you have to make the leap of faith. Question, what is intuitive decision-making? Check the video description for the answer. Chapter 7, Group Decision-Making As they sat around the conference table, each individual brought their own unique perspective to the collaborative decision-making process. The group was tasked with determining the best way to allocate the company's resources for the upcoming quarter. Some individuals had data-driven input, referencing past financial reports and projected profits. Others brought creative solutions to the table, suggesting a bold marketing campaign or developing new product lines. It was clear that everyone had a stake in the decision and was passionate about finding the best solution. While the group was varied in their approaches, everyone shared a common goal to make the best decision for the company's success. The collaborative atmosphere allowed for open dialogue and constructive criticism, leading to a robust discussion of ideas. After hours of deliberation, the group finally reached a decision that satisfied all parties involved. They had come up with an innovative plan that maximized efficiency and profitability while taking into account the diverse input of the individuals in the room. The success of the group decision-making process had proven that the whole was truly greater than the sum of its parts. By utilizing the diverse skills and perspectives of each individual, they had come up with a solution that was more innovative and efficient than anything one person could have come up with alone. As they left the conference room, the individuals felt a sense of pride and accomplishment. They had come together as a team to achieve something great and had proven the power of collaborative decision-making. From that day on, the company made a conscious effort to prioritize this approach to decision-making. They recognized that individual input was important, but that sometimes the best solutions came from a group effort. Through collaborative decision, making, the company continued to flourish, achieving new levels of success and innovation. The individuals within the organization felt valued and listened to, as their unique perspectives were consistently taken into account when making important decisions. The group decision-making process had created an environment of trust and respect, fueling the success of the company as a whole. The individuals felt empowered and motivated to work towards the common goal, knowing that their efforts were contributing to something greater than themselves. As the company continued to grow and evolve, they never forgot the power of collaborative decision-making. It had become ingrained in their culture, contributing to the ongoing success and prosperity of the organization. The individuals within the company felt proud to be a part of such a collaborative and innovative team, knowing that their contributions were valued and appreciated. Question, what is group decision-making? Check the video description for the answer. Chapter 8, Decision-Making Biases As the team gathered around the conference table, they knew that the decision they were about to make was a critical one for the company's future. They had analyzed the data, considered the alternatives, and brainstormed potential solutions. But even with all of their efforts, they were still susceptible to common biases that could lead them astray. One of these biases was confirmation bias, 
the tendency to search for information that confirms one's preconceptions and ignore information that contradicts them. The team realized that they had become too attached to one particular solution, dismissing other options that could be just as viable. They had to take a step back and re-examine their assumptions, considering all possibilities with an open mind. Another bias that they had to contend with was anchoring bias, the tendency to rely too heavily on the first piece of information received when making a decision. The team realized that they had become anchored to a particular set of data points, preventing them from considering other variables that could change the outcome of their decision. They reminded themselves to keep an open mind and consider all information equally, rather than giving preference to one source over another. But perhaps the most insidious bias that they had to guard against was the sunk cost fallacy. This was the idea that people tend to continue investing in a losing proposition because they've already sunk time, money, or effort into it, even if it no longer makes sense to do so. The team recognized that they were in danger of falling into this trap, as they had already invested a significant amount of resources into a particular project. However, they reminded themselves that the past investment was irrelevant to the current decision, and that they needed to focus on what would be most effective moving forward, regardless of what had come before. With these biases in mind, the team was able to make a clear-eyed decision that took into account all relevant information and options. They recognized that fallacies and biases were common in decision-making, but that by staying aware of them, they could avoid their worst effects. As the meeting broke up, the team felt confident in their decision and proud of the work they had done to get there. They knew that their decision was not a perfect one, and that they would never be able to completely eliminate the biases that threatened to distort every decision. But they felt that they had done their due diligence and taken every precaution to ensure that they were making the best decision possible given the information at hand. As time went on and their decision was implemented, they saw positive results, confirming that they had made the right choice. And they knew that they would continue to be vigilant against biases and fallacies in their future decisions, always striving for the most effective and objective outcome possible. Question, what are some common decision-making biases to be aware of? Check the video description for the answer. Chapter 9, Decision-Making in Business as Emma entered the boardroom, tension hung thick in the air. The team had been working for weeks to decide the best course of action for the business, but there were conflicting opinions on what would be most effective. She knew that the profitability and competitiveness of the company were at stake, and the decision they made today would have a significant impact on the business's future. Emma reviewed the data that had been gathered, taking care to consider all options. As she listened to her colleagues' arguments, she also recognized the importance of keeping personal biases and emotions out of the decision-making process. This was no time for interpersonal conflicts or ego battles. The only thing that mattered was finding the best solution for the company. Finally, after hours of discussion, a consensus was reached. It was a difficult choice, requiring sacrifices in some areas to prioritize others. But the team believed it was the best way forward for the business. Over the next few months, the effects of their decision became apparent. The company's profitability increased, and it became more competitive in its industry. Customers responded positively to the changes, and the business began to thrive. As Emma looked back on the decision-making process, she realized that the key to success wasn't just analyzing data or crunching numbers. It was about creating a collaborative and respectful environment where all team members felt comfortable sharing their ideas and concerns. It was about recognizing personal biases and working to eliminate them from the decision-making process. And it was about keeping the ultimate goal of the business's success in mind, even when faced with difficult choices. Emma recognized the importance of ongoing decision-making in business 
and that it was a skill that required constant honing and refinement. She made a commitment to continue learning and growing in this area, seeking out resources and tools to support effective decision-making in the future. As the business continued to thrive, Emmer realized that their decision-making process had been a crucial factor in its success. Even when faced with tough choices, the team had been able to rise to the occasion and find the solution that was most effective for the business. And as Emma looked ahead to the future, she knew that this skill would continue to be essential for the growth and sustainability of the company. Question. How does decision-making relate to business? Check the video description for the answer. Chapter 10, Decision-Making Strategies Emma had always been dedicated to her work, but she never realized how much effort went into decision-making until she became the manager of her team. With multiple projects constantly in motion, it was vital to have effective decision-making strategies in place to keep productivity high and minimize errors. One of the most useful tools she learned to use was cost-benefit analysis. This technique allowed her to weigh the potential costs and benefits of each decision, helping her determine the best course of action. It was especially useful when assessing new projects, as it allowed her to assess the potential risk and reward before committing resources. In addition to cost-benefit analysis, she found SWOT analysis to be incredibly valuable. SWOT analysis involves examining the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats of a situation. This process helped her to identify potential challenges and opportunities while also considering the overall impact of each decision. Six thinking hats was another technique that proved useful in decision-making. This process involves wearing different hats to approach a decision from different angles, such as creative, logical, or emotional perspectives. By looking at the situation from multiple viewpoints, Emma was able to consider all potential outcomes and make informed decisions that accounted for different perspectives. Over time, Emma learned to develop her own decision-making strategies that incorporated these techniques and others. She recognized the importance of being flexible and adaptable in her approach to decision-making, as the needs of each situation varied. One thing she always kept in mind was that strategies were not one-size-fits-all. What worked for one decision might not work for another and she made sure to take the time to consider the specific nuances of each situation before selecting the appropriate approach. Most importantly, Emma learned to trust her instincts. While it was important to use analytical tools and strategies, she recognized that there was also a place for intuitive decision-making. She learned to cultivate her own instincts and to trust them when faced with difficult or uncertain decisions. As Emma looked back on her growth as a manager, she realized that decision-making was not just a matter of making the right choices, it was also about learning from mistakes and making adjustments when needed. With each decision, she gained greater clarity and confidence, honing her skills and deepening her understanding of the factors that influence effective decision-making. Through her dedication and hard work, she had become a skilled decision-maker, capable of making confident and informed choices even in the most challenging situations. As she looked ahead to the future, she was excited to continue refining her decision-making strategies and exploring new tools and techniques that would help her and her team succeed. She recognized that the ability to make informed, effective decisions was essential for the growth and success of the business and she was determined to continue building her skills in this area. Question, what are some common decision-making strategies? Check the video description for the answer. Chapter 11, Improving Decision-Making Skills As a team leader at her company, Sarah was constantly looking for ways to improve her decision-making skills. She knew that biases could cloud her judgment, and that diverse opinions could help her see things from different perspectives. So, 
she decided to implement some new strategies to help her make more mindful decisions. First, she started practicing mindfulness meditation every morning. This helped her clear her mind and become more aware of her thoughts and feelings. With a clearer mind, she found that she was better able to make decisions without being influenced by her biases. Next, she started analyzing her past decisions to identify any patterns or biases that she might not have been aware of. She started keeping a journal where she wrote down the factors that influenced her decisions. By being more aware of these factors, she was able to make more informed decisions in the future. Another strategy she implemented was to seek out diverse opinions. She recognized that everyone on her team had a unique perspective, and that by listening to a variety of opinions, she could make better decisions. She started holding team meetings where everyone was encouraged to share their thoughts and ideas. By listening to this diverse group, Sarah was able to identify potential blind spots in her thinking and make more informed decisions. Of course, analysis was also an important part of her decision-making process. She knew that she couldn't just rely on her intuition alone. She would frequently conduct research and data analysis to help her make more informed decisions. Sarah recognized that she needed multiple sources of information in order to make the most effective decisions. With these new strategies in place, Sarah found that her decision-making skills improved significantly. She was able to make more informed decisions with less stress and anxiety. She also noticed that her team members started to gain more trust in her leadership abilities, as they could see that she was making decisions based on careful analysis and consideration of diverse opinions. However, she still encountered challenges. There were times when she would feel overwhelmed with information and unsure of what to do. During these times, Sarah would take a step back and remind herself of her mindfulness practice. She would take a moment to clear her mind and recenter herself before continuing with her decision-making process. Ultimately, Sarah knew that improving her decision-making skills was a continuous process. She would never be perfect, but by implementing these strategies and practices, she could continually strive to improve her abilities. She was excited to see what new challenges and opportunities lay ahead, knowing that she was now better equipped to tackle them with her newfound skills. Question. How can you improve your decision-making 